Hey guys and welcome to another Flame of Fours video. In this video I'm going to show you how you can upgrade your brakes on a VW Scirocco 2008 plate to a drilled set of brakes by Brembo and also it will be included the pad system as well which is really good quality. Like this. I'm going to show you how to do all this straight after this intro. Hey guys and welcome back. The first thing you're going to need to be able to do the brake system here are quite a few little tools. So let me just quickly run a few stuff that you're going to need. Um, you're going to need to take the wheel uh, covers off and in the boot of your car you should have a little device like this. You just slide that in and then pull. That reveals the nuts. I'm going to run through sizes just so you guys know. Um, so this seems to be a 17mm. So you're going to need a 17mm to undo the five nuts out there. So once you've taken the cap off, loosen the nuts, don't take them all the way out. Once the wheel is loose enough, then you can jack it up. Once it's jacked up, then we can get on to upgrading the brake system there. With the, um, sorry about the wind, this is just a bit windy where I am. With the rear brakes, what you want to do is you want to make sure your hand brakes down, but make sure that the car is actually in gear. So when the car's in gear, then it's held, and then you won't have problems when we go to do the rear calipers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jack up this whole side of this um, passenger side of the car, and then we're going to do the front set, and then we're going to do the rear set, so you can see how it is. I'm not going to go around and do the whole lot. I will do it, but it'll be off camera. You will see what I'm going to do in stages. I'm going to now go and jack the car up. Remember, you can jack them on the jacking points, which are here. There's like a little triangle. So put your jack under there, put your axle stands near it, jack the whole side of the car up. But remember to loosen off the wheels first, okay, guys? The other thing you're going to need when you're doing the wheels and changing the brake system, you're going to need one of these devices. Basically, this winds the caliper back in. I'm pretty sure I used this when I did them before. And then you just wind them in. So you need to grab yourself one of these. And then you also need the breaker bar to be able to take them off. I've got one of these ones here, it's just an extendable one, just allows you to be able to take them off. So, I'm going to go ahead and loosen these off, get the wheels off, and then we're going to go on to the next stages, and I'm going to show you what I've used to be able to upgrade my brake system. Um, I'm going to show you how to take the caliper off, how to um, do everything behind there, but I'm not going to show you taking the wheel off, I'm just going to go and quickly do that, and then be back. So, see you in a minute. Okay guys, now the car is jacked up and the axle stands are in place. The first thing you need to do before touching anything is make sure you take the cap off the top of the uh, brake fluid because when you're winding the calipers back in, you want to make sure that you don't have to bleed the system if you can help it. So having that, that off doesn't allow any air to leak out. So you want to just take the, the cap off of that and then when that's done, you'll be able to do it. The second thing that you need to do Make sure that these are right. You don't want to go start taking this off and then deem your car off the road. So check these. Make sure that they look like they're going to fit. If they are, then proceed. If they look like they're wrong, stop and then find out why. Because you've probably got the wrong ones. The same with the brakes. These look absolutely fine, to be honest with you. Uh, with Brembo's, they seem to paint the uh, brake pads and paint the, the top of the disc so they don't go rusty, which is like, really cool which I like. I mean, they are actually made good quality. So, first thing we need to do, I've just got a few things set up. You need to take the back of this cap off, which just goes behind the caliper here. That allows you to be able to put this in. So this is a T45, that's going to undo the carrier, which is going to come away, which will release the pads. And then obviously the big carrier will need to come off as well because and then that will allow you to undo the brake discs itself. There is a star key here which I'll just quickly find out what size that is. Let's go with... Right, so it's this size which is a T30. The best thing to do is possibly why it's all together is just give it a loosen. Don't take it all the way off because the it'll squabble about and it'll just be annoying. So, so far we've got a T45 and a T30 which is what we need to be able to do this. The next thing we're going to need is a screwdriver. I don't know where the rest of the screwdriver is but it doesn't really matter. Just to prise out this carrier thing here because this holds it all together. It's just a safety thing. You just take that off 
and then that comes away like that. Put that somewhere safe. As you can tell, mine are all painted. They got a bit dirty since I last had them, but never mind. The other thing I need to do is find out what size of nut is behind here. There's a nut that holds this carrier on, and I think it's a 19. What you need to do first, before you can get that nut off, is you need to slide the um, ABS bracket here out of the carrier, and then if you can, just use a little clip for it to disconnect it. I will show you what I'm doing in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and do it myself first. This is going to be better with a screwdriver. Excuse the noise, quite. Uh, I'm near a road, so it's quite loud. So guys, what I've done now is I've taken out these two pins. You're not going to be able to see where I've taken them out from just yet, but they are the T45 pins. They go from just behind there. That should now release the carrier. Let me just quickly see if I can find my trusty screwdriver. Actually, I've got like a little crowbar here. I'll try that, see if that works. So you just need to get this away. I mean, I know you're probably thinking, oh, these brakes look really good. They're actually a really... I've not actually had them on there that long. They're not even worn, but I just wanted to upgrade them to Brembo because that's just a preference that I have. You might have some other ones that you can. I mean, you can do the calipers as well, put Brembo's on there, but I mean, it's, it's you have to change the whole system, so it's quite a lot harder than just replacement Brembo's, and they're not actually that expensive, to be fair. So that just comes off there, and then out like that. And then it kind of reveals what's going on here. So I don't know if you can see. So the, the brake pads are just sitting in here. This is the one with the wear indicator. Remember that goes at the back. So that when you put it back on, that you, you know that that's where it goes. And as, as you can see, you still can't take the disc off because the carrier here is still holding the disc on. So what you just need to do, you just need to pull them out, pop them off. As you can tell, there's loads of... Um, pad on there still but who cares let's just do it anyway um while that's off let's just sit that up there for a minute make sure it doesn't fall down because you don't want to break your hose and then this is a good opportunity now just to make sure that the pads that you've gone and got i mean if you wanted to paint the calipers that's a good opportunity now to paint them because before you put them back on leave them to dry overnight get them painted up and then do it let's find the one that's got the wear indicator on so is the wearing kit one so just match them up guys make sure that they look the same they, they fit still comparison so like i said these haven't been off long on the car long i only did them last year so they are still pretty much brand new we can't go ahead and put them on yet so we're just going to leave them off for a minute then the next thing that you need to do is just get this other pad out they literally just pull off, they're only sitting in there, so they just sit in there like that. So now that's done, that can go out of the way. Um, these are these are like push ones, so you don't actually have to wind them in with a push tool, because they're actually just squeezable. So what you need to do is you need to set your tool up, so that you can wind this kind of back in. You can still use this to do it absolutely fine you just set this up in here and then you just keep winding this down until it fits in the hole it's just going to push it back in because the with the brake fluid reservoir is open this should just this should just wind back in with no problems at all as you can see the caliper is now resetting itself and pushing itself back in so you just want to get push that back in as far as it will go make sure you don't hit any of this uh, outer um, skin here because that is protecting the actual thing itself so you just keep winding that back in there we go so that's in as far as it will go so now you just got to undo that and that's done so let's take it out far enough so that's in as far as that is going to be and then that comes out, which comes with this tool. I think this tool is like twenty pounds, but I mean, it's really handy to have. You can use it on more than just this. You you might want to use this opportunity to like clean up any brake dust that's in there because it gathers a lot of crud. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm trying to rest this in here out of the way, this caliper. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. And then we need to undo this. I still haven't found out what size it is, so I'm going to go and get the right tool for it. And then we're going to come back and we're going to take this carrier off, because this is going to be a nightmare to take off. And then it's going to reveal the disc, and then we'll be able to do the disc. Okay, guys. I found a 1316 which is like that and that undoes it and it fits over perfect so I'm thinking it might be a 20 I will put it in the uh, description box for you guys I've now loosened them off they're actually quite easy to do because I've used WD-40 on them before I even attempted to do this so remember to squirt it all up with WD-40 and they've been off before so they are a bit of a nightmare to undo you just come off here this is what they look like quite a big nut to be fair this will now allow me to take off the carrier so that's that the carrier's here so this is where them bolts go through so they go through the back here I don't know if you can see there like that oops dropped it probably not the best thing um, so yeah that goes through there like that guys and then it goes into the actual carrier itself so it goes through and then into the carrier which is what holds that on let me just put that down I'll see if I've got anything to clean up. Yeah, I've got a little, got a little brush here. So, like I said, it, I would go along and just clean up these carriers a bit. Just give them a nice dust off. Make sure there's no um, excess brake dust and no crud in there. Because as, as you can see, it's, there's a lot of it. Move the new ones out of the way. So then they get covered in it either. And you are going to need some copper grease because that's going to stop the brake squealing when it comes to it right so i'll carry on cleaning those up offset uh you need to revert back to your t30 to undo this little thing you need to hold it on make sure use anything to hold it on just do not let this fall on your foot because it will really hurt take that out and keep it somewhere safe because you will need it to put it back on the old one and then just lift this away like so and then you're revealing this Give this a nice clean up. We're going to put a bit of copper grease around here before we put it all back together. Give it all a little spruce because you never really get to the chance to get in here usually. So you might as well give it a little clean up while you can. Them other carrier nuts, which were these ones, came out of here. So they go in there. And that's what holds it to that other carrier here. So that holds it through into there, yeah? So that's what that's for. Now we're going to go do the fun part, which is put the new system on. So let me just grab the new disc. Well, before we do that, actually, let's crack open this and let's lube up the old system. So, copper grease, you just want to kind of put it anywhere there's moving parts. So you just need to get a little bit of copper grease. What I tend to do is just put it around the shaft of this. You can put it anywhere that nuts go if you want to, but it does get a bit messy. So you just want to put it all the way around there. Once that's all copper, oops, it. Once that's all copper greased up, go ahead and grab a new disc. And then you want to find the locating lug. These are beautiful. I love these discs. And then that goes on there like that. And then you want to get your little your little pin line that up make sure you don't cross thread it and then go ahead spin it to the back and then you can do this up properly it might not allow you to do it all the way up because the whole disc will probably spin but it's actually going all right for me let me know if it goes different for you guys um, right so there you go, don't do it too tight. Do it tight enough, but don't do it like overly tight. Look at them beauties. They're nice, aren't they? Right. Get any excess grease off there that you can. There we go. Right, so the next thing we need to do now, we've got a bit of carrier back on. So, that's all been cleaned up. That just slides back over there, like so. And then, before you put these bolts back on, what I recommend doing is just with the excess on the brush, just put a bit of copper grease on there, just to keep the threads nice and good, like so, all the way down. 
and just copper grease them up. Just give them so there's stops anything squeaking really. And then here comes the tricky part again, getting the carrier back on. So slide the carrier over, put the nuts through, into the hole. It's best to get down here and have a look what you're doing, just so you can see. Here we go. I'll just do it on set. I won't tighten them all up. I'll do that in a minute. But I'll just put it on there so you can see what's going on. Get the other nut. Make sure there's not no bits of rubbish in there or anything. And then just go around it again with the copper grease. Just the excess copper grease. Just giving it a nice lubrication there. Put it to go in. I mean, like I say, if you want to paint up the calipers, again, you can. They'll probably look better. But um, I'm going to be selling mine very, very soon. Once I've refurbished the alloys, so I'm not really too bothered about doing the calipers, although it would probably make them look good when I go sell it. But I just want to show you guys for the purpose of the video just what you need to do to be able to put it together. Right, so now what we need is the brakes. With the brakes, what you want to do is you just want to like kind of lube up in here with a little bit of copper grease. So you just want to kind of Put a bit in there and then just down anywhere that it will touch in the gaps and then you can just paint up this just anywhere it will squeak really like so and then remember guys that this one went in the back so now that your calipers all wound in let me just get some of this rubbish out You might want to wear a mask when you're doing this because smoke through is a bit dodge. Right, so that just sits in there like so. I don't know if you can see, but it has to line up and go into this. It goes into this like it goes into the hole of the caliper, but it, you have to line it up really well so you can get it in. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it without a bit of assistance, but I'm gonna try. There you go, and that pushes into there. Keep the cover on because you don't want any dust to get into it. Um, let me just sit that back on top of there for two seconds. Right, so I need another brake pad. Make sure there's no crud on it. Again, with the copper grease, just get in the gaps anywhere that it will touch. Just make sure you've got a nice bit of copper grease on there, on the back of the brake pad. Like that. Once that's all done, this literally just sits and locates in here. Right, once that's done, you just need to bring this down. Make sure, this is going to get a bit fiddly guys, and these calipers are heavy. Um, make sure that this is up out of the way. You could possibly just put this one into the carrier itself if you wanted to, which is possibly what I might do. Yeah, so I'm just going to put that one in the carrier leave that one can sit in the carrier and this one can just sit into there so make sure we put that one in the carrier there and then this one can just sit over the top make sure that this doesn't this uh bit doesn't get in the way now we'll just slide over there like so and then you can put your locating pins make sure that this comes through at a, a good place for you to be able to put that back together pins back in and that's it guys and then just do your pins up put your connectors back on and then put that through what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go ahead and put all that together which won't take me too long and change my gloves up and then uh, remember to put this oh bit of a wobble there remember to put this back on this goes on here so literally what you need to do at the end is just put them in their holes and then just get a screwdriver and just pry it over I might just quickly show you how to do that at the end um, but I'm just going to quickly go put that back together for you now because that bit's done. Okay guys, that's all done now. So, I'm just ready to put the wheel back on but I'm just going to show you what I've done. So, there's other little pin bolts were done which was a T45 there in there. Just got to remember to put the caps back on, yeah? Keep them safe so they don't go all rotten. The sensor is now put back in so that just slides into this piece here. The housing is on. The last thing 
that we need to put on is this little pin thing. So like I say, it's best to start with the top. So go to the top and then push that in. And then push that into the hole there. So that they're in. And as you can see the top one's there, it's in there. And then now you just need to slide the bottom over. That will just finish the rest of the carrier off. So just get in there. I mean if you've just painted it, you could probably just use pliers to pull it over just to stop yourself from ruining what you've done. And then that just goes over the top like that and just holds them in there like that. So guys, this is all now put back together. I've just got to tighten up the nuts and then put the caps back on. But I've got new caps coming and I'm also going to be doing a video shortly on how to repair wheels once they're scuffed like this. I mean, I've already painted them myself once. I'm going to show you, but look how much better that looks. Such a better disc such a better braking system and there you go so that's how you do the front let's move on to the back okay guys now that we're on to the rear this is a whole new different system so you're going to need like a 13 mil spanner or socket it's going to be easy to do with two spanners and a 15 mil so to get the carrier off like we did on the front you're going to have to hold the 15 mil on the inner um the inner hexagonal nut here and then you're going to need to use a 13 mil with either the ratchet spanner if you want to do it with speed uh, or the open-ended spanner bit and then you kind of like work it against itself so you want to hold the 15 in place while you're taking off the 13 at the back to get the carrier off so that just holds that nut in place there let me just show you what I mean So that 15 just holds that in place to allow you to undo this and then this nut comes out here so that's a 13 and a 15 and it's best to do it with these i mean i i can't remember how I did the rear so i'm just gonna quickly go ahead and have a look while you guys are watching and i'm gonna prize this open and see if this will actually come out which it is coming out nice and easy so let's see so you just need to get those off like that it's nice and tight which is good because it means it's working so that's what you want like i say the handbrake's off this so that the disc is free because you don't want to have that on if you can help it right so now that's away you can see that in here that tool will actually fit in this so i'll see if i can bring it down a little bit closer to see what i'm going to do move you in okay swing it down so in there there's like two sides um, and that fits the actual tool so what you need to do again is just put your tool in place which sits in there like that wind this down enough so it's out of the way slot it in place you need to wind it down a little bit more you have to excuse the wind guys, it's really windy out here today. Um, that just slots in there. And then the, there's two little locating lugs which actually fit into the caliper itself. So that's where that goes. So you want to just go back as far as you can until the caliper stops, until, the, um, until you can't wind it anymore. It's hard to show you what I'm doing, especially when uh, doing that at the same time. Right. Right. That's gone in nearly pretty much all the way. There you go, trying to give you an insight of what's going on without breaking anything else. So you just spin that until that's done up. And then once that's done, you want to make sure that sometimes yeah, so it's fine. That's in now, so undo that and then free that off. And then, as you can see, the caliper is now, it's quite hard to see, but the caliper is now reset, so that's flush in there, so that's now reset. But again, um, if you've got a brush, take this opportunity to give it a nice, good spruce up, just get any excess rust and dirt out of it but 
you can. This is this is really the best thing to use when you're going to paint them as well. So that's always that. <coughs> Excuse me, a cough. I'm just going to check what the next carry bolt are, how it's held on. So it seems to be held on to there. Um, I'm not too sure if this is going to. This might let me take this disc off without having to do the whole thing. So let's just see. So you need a uh, T30 again guys, which is what you need to undo this. The wind is getting up, it's lovely. Good old British weather. Once that's out, put that somewhere safe. Let's see if I can take this off without doing the carry. I don't think I can. I think I need to... Nope, there you go. That's fine. So you will be able to put this disc on without having to take this carry off because it is built into the actual system. So you don't even need to take this off, it's going to be a lot faster. Do the rears than I was expecting. Again, lube up your centerpiece with a nice amount of uh, copper grease. <coughs> Excuse me, copper. Jesus. Um, you can change your gloves if you are that bothered about. Oh well, this one actually came with some new nuts, so that's kind of rempo to do that for us. So there's some nuts on there. Uh, I think that disc is shining in the camera too much, there we go. So, get your new disc, slot it into into the holes, and then find out where it lines up. So it lines up here, and then do this new shiny nut up. And this is, um, I'm actually not going to put this in. I'm just going to put the old one in, because it's a Phillips, and I don't have a Phillips screwdriver on me right now, because I've got the star keys out, and... The original ones are fine to put back in, all they are is just a holder to hold the disc in. So go ahead and do that up, like so. Seems like the rear one is a lot faster to do than, than the other ones, to be fair. Don't over tighten this because you probably want to take it off again at some point again. And you don't want to go and cost thread it or anything like that. So. Just do it up nice and tight so it doesn't wobble on the system. Right, now that's done. What we need to do, the pads have just fallen out, so we don't even need to worry about that right now. Just find the other one. Remember, go around, give it a little clean up. Make sure you got off any excess brake dust. Um, and then, all you need to do next, just make sure everything's free. Check the brake pads are correct and hope copper grease just to lube up the areas where it's going to go make sure you put some on the back of the backing plate there and then what you need to do is these just sit into this housing here like so make sure that backing plate stays on and then remember to do the same as um, same on the other side so let's just quickly put a little bit on there so that's all done and then that just slots in place. Remember, have it the right way round. So they just sit. They just sit on that housing there. And then let me just quickly clean my hands up to just show you what to do next. And then this piece. Uh, remember to make sure that that's screwed all the way back in. That should just slide nicely over the top, like that. This will. These are on springs, so make sure that they push in okay. Uh, and then they're going to be pretty springy because you sort of push them in as you put the bolts in. So remember, oh, camera jogger. Remember they came with new ones, so whack the new ones in, get it all lined up, and then get them started. Once they're started, and you can go around afterwards and put them in properly. So as long as you get them started first, you'll be absolutely fine. These are on springs, so you just have to push them in until they line up. Just try and get this one in. Yeah, here we go. So, there we go. So now it's like that. So that's in. And remember, it's going to take um, a 15 mil, which goes on here, like that. And then it's done up with the 13 mil. I'll just quickly go and show you that real quick. So keep that in place. 
and then wind that up until it's done up tight. Don't do it all the way up first, just make sure that it's done up enough and then go ahead and do the bottom one up and then once you're finished you can go around and tighten the whole thing. Okay, so remember 15 and 13, so 15 to hold, 13 to undo and do up. Let's just quickly do that quickly. Get nice and tight, pulling in as you can see. Right, so let's do that up nice and tight. That's the bottom one down. That's nice and stuck. Hold on a second. And then we're going to do the top one. I keep jogging the camera with my knee because there's hardly any space. And I'm trying to keep it. I'm trying to keep you guys out of the uh, out of the wind because it's really windy where I am right now. I'm going to have to reduce the background noise on this as much as I can. Right, let's do this up nice and tight. There we go, so that's all done up. It does have a bit of movement, uh, but it's meant to, because obviously once we put the we put the foot down on the brake, then obviously that's going to pull that in nicely. So that's all done guys, so that's how you do the rear. Let's just quickly take you out a bit. I'm now going to put the wheel on and then I'll give you an, a bit of an insight of what it all looks like once it's done. So that is how you change the brake pads and the brake discs on the VW Scirocco 2008 plate. Thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more videos like this or any other videos that I do and thanks for watching and the people that have subscribed already thank you very much and uh, take care and see you guys soon. Bye bye. So two, two hours and 45 minutes has taken me to upgrade the brakes on the car. So that's the rears. And that's this side. I haven't put the cats back on yet guys because I'm going to be, uh, be putting new ones on. But they just look so good. Let's just quickly take you around to the other side. I know they look the same but so you can see they're all done. I've already had a little test in them, and they are sharp as anything, very sharp. So, there you go guys, a little snippet of what they look like.